Hi there guys. Uh, it is important for us to understand how radiation interacts and how it deposits its energy into a material. This is a prerequisite in understanding how to detect and measure radiation of different types. My discussion in this video lecture is just an overview of radiation interaction. It requires extensive mathematical discussion to formally talk about this topic. Well, I will create a different video lecture on that. For now, uh, let us start with the introductory lecture. This is the outline of this video lecture. In discussing radiation interactions with matter, we can generally divide it into three groups. First, uh, we have charge particles that includes the following, your electron, your positron, proton, deuteron, alpha, and heavy ions. Second group is uh, photons. That includes your X-ray and gamma ray. Third, we have neutrons. Uh, this classification is created because each group has its own characteristic in terms of energy deposition and scattering. When we're talking about charge particle interaction, it is mostly about Coulomb force interaction. Charge particle Coulomb force interaction can be characterized in terms of the two important parameters shown here. First, the classical impact parameter B. Second, the atomic radius A. Let us start with charge particle interaction. Uh, charge particle mainly interacts through Coulomb force interaction. For example, a negative charge electron shown here uh, and a positive nucleus uh, that constitute the atoms of the material. Shown in the drawing is the Coulomb interactions with electrons and the nuclei. The force on the electron over a given time may result in the transfer of energy from the moving charge particle to the bound electron. This interaction may lead to ionization or excitation, and it usually happens when we have a hard collision, meaning the impact parameter B is approximately the same with the atomic radius A, the one that I shown in the previous slide. The term ionization happens when an electron has enough energy to leave the atom and become a free particle. The incoming charge particle will eventually stop and fast electrons produced in the process are called delta rays. So that's delta rays. Next, excitation. So it's also possible. It takes place when electrons have enough energy to move to an empty state, thus uh, producing an excited atom. When we have a free charge particle accelerating or decelerating, part of its carried kinetic energy will be emitted as electromagnetic wave called the brems -Chalon. This happens when there is a Coulomb force interactions between the external nuclear field and if it is an inelastic scattering, there will be a photon emission. Most of the time, about 97%, it is inelastic. If it is elastic scattering, the charged particle will just get deflected without photon emission. Third, we have nuclear interactions. For a heavy charged particle with kinetic energy about, let's say, 100 mega electron volts and with an impact parameter less than the nuclear radius, charged particles may interact inelastically with the nucleus. It is possible to remove one or more nucleons as well in this interaction. In terms of energy loss, uh, we have the Cherenkov radiation, uh, which is just a very small fraction of that energy loss. This is a visible electromagnetic radiation emitted by particles traveling in a medium with particle speed greater than the speed of light in the given medium, as shown here in the picture at the right. If the charged particle passes an atom at considerable uh, distance, let's say B is much, much greater than A, uh, soft collisions may happen and it emits a coherent bluish white light. Let us now focus on the trajectories of the charged particle. If the incoming charged particle is an electron or positron, we roughly draw its trajectory as shown in the green. The electron or positron may collide with an orbital electron and lose all its energy in a single collision because it involves particles with the same mass, uh, same with the collision problem in mechanics. Uh, it can be electron to electron or electron to positron. 
As shown in the drawing, it may scatter at large angles with zigzag pattern and may lose large energy per collision. On contrary, heavy charged particles are hardly deflected with almost straight trajectories as shown. They lose uh, smaller amounts of energy per collision, unlike electrons and positrons. We have this quantity called the stopping power. It is the expectation value of the rate of energy loss per unit path length x by a charged particle of type Y and kinetic energy T in a medium of atomic number Z. Dividing the stopping power by a density rho of the absorbing medium uh, results in a quantity called the mass st stopping power. When one is interested in the fate of the energy loss by charged particle, stopping power may be divided into two. First, we have the collision stopping power. Uh, and we have here the soft and hard collisions or the collision interactions. This refers to the energy losses incurred by a charged particle in ionization and excitation events, uh, which is generally called collisional losses. Second, we have the rejective stopping power. This involves the rejective interactions. Uh, generally, this is for those incurred in nuclear encounters that results in Bremsstrahlung production. This increases with increasing particle energy. We have other expressions for the stopping power and the maximum energy transfer. The stopping power S can be defined also in terms of the interaction cross-section, mu, which is just the probability uh, that a collision occurs per unit distance. Then we have QAV here, which is the average energy loss per collision. Next, we have this scenario at the right. So we have a target, then we have this incoming particle traveling at a certain V. Then we can define the maximum energy transfer uh, after this collision interaction, which is equal to 4 times small m capital M E over uh, m capital M plus small m squared. Let us now talk about photon interaction. But first, uh, let us define again photons. Photons includes the electromagnetic radiation, such as X-rays and gamma rays. The relationship between the energy of a photon, its wavelength and frequency is shown here. So we have E is equal to H nu, or this is also equal to Hc over lambda. X-rays are generally uh, generated by atomic transitions that includes excitation and ionization. We can have Bremsstrahlung X-rays that has a continuous energy spectrum and a characteristic X-rays with specific energy values. On the other hand, gamma rays are produced due to nuclear transition. Thus, the main difference between X-rays and gamma rays are the point of origin. We can have these three general statements for the possible fate of a photon during its interaction with matter. First, we have the uh, this one. It penetrates the matter without interacting. Uh, this can be uh, the Rayleigh scattering. Second, it interacts and absorbs by energy deposition. One example is the photoelectric effect. Last, uh, we have interact and scattered or deflected as it deposits energy. This can be Compton effect or Compton scattering. For this introduction video, I will introduce the three most important interactions of photons, specifically the photoelectric effect, Compton scattering, and pair production. The photoelectric effect is just an interaction between a photon and a bound atomic electron. The photon disappears and one of the orbital electron is ejected uh, as free electron called the photoelectron, which is this one. The kinetic energy of the electron is expressed as the difference between the energy of the photon and the binding energy of the electron. So next, uh, we have this one, the probability of interaction called the photoelectric cross-section. This coefficient tau, uh, with units of uh, per meter, is expressed generally as this. So we have A, which is the which is just a constant and is the number of atoms per volume. Z, the, at, the atomic number. E, the photon energy. And a correction term, O, uh, indicated in terms of the value of the Z or the atomic number. 
One important thing to note is the dependence of the cross-section with photon energy and the atomic number of the material. So as you increase the photon energy, you also decrease. So we decrease the tau or the probability of the photoelectric effect. Then as you increase the Z, we have an increasing tau or we have an increasing cross-section of photoelectric effect. Second type of interaction is Compton effect or Compton scattering. It is a collision between a photon and a free electron as illustrated here. So we have this photon, then this free electron. Normally, electrons are bound and not free. However, if the photon energy is in the order of kilo electron volts and the electron's binding energy is of the order of electron volts only, electron is essentially free. This is an elastic collision uh, between a photon and an electron in which only part of the photon energy is transferred to the electron. An electron may be ejected as illustrated here. The photon uh, with reduced energy is scattered by theta, this one, uh, and this interaction dominates at gamma ray energies of about 1 mega electron volts. I also presented here the Compton electron energy which is the difference uh, in the energy of incoming photon and the scattered photon. This is due to the conservation of energy. Now, using the conservation of momentum, the scattered photon energy uh, as a function of the scattering angle can be expressed as follows, shown here. Note that it is impossible for all the energy of the incident photon to be given to the electron. Same with photoelectric effect, we have the cross-section for Compton. The probability that uh, Compton scattering will occur is called the Compton cross-section. It is expressed with a complicated function of the photon energy as shown. So we have sigma, approximately we have this rho, which is the mass density. This is your Avogadro's number. We have the atomic weight A. Then we have Z, which is just the atomic number, and F. Uh, which is a function of the incoming photon energy. One thing to note with this probability is that it is almost independent of the atomic uh, number of the material as illustrated in the graph here. The differential or a differential cross-section for photon scattering can be derived, well, which is called the Kleinishina cross-section, but I will not show it in this uh, lecture video. We have the third photon interaction, which is the pair production. It is an interaction between a photon and a nucleus, as shown in the drawing. As a result, the photon disappears and an electron-positron pair appears. Although the nucleus does not change, its presence is a requirement for a pair production to proceed. Although uh, there is a small uh, probability, that it take place in the field of an electron with threshold energy of about 4 mc squared. Uh, that's, that is about 2.04 mega electron volts. By conservation of energy, the kinetic energy of the electron and the positron is expressed as follows, as shown in this uh, equation. So we have the kinetic energy of the electron, the, pon, the positron, the photon energy minus the, uh, the required threshold energy to produce uh, this pair of masses, which is of your electron and positron. The available kinetic energy is the energy of the photon minus 1.022 mega electron volts. Same with photoelectric effect and Compton effect, we have the probability that a pair production will occur, which is called the pair production cross-section. It is a complex function of the photon energy and Z, the atomic number, expressed as follows. So we have kappa, or K, is equal to N, uh, Z squared, where N is the number of atoms per volume, your Z is the atomic number, your F is a function that changes slightly with Z and increases with photon energy as illustrated in the graph. Uh, out of the three cross-section presented, uh, Pair production cross-section is the only one increasing with photon energy as shown here.
and we have this uh, threshold energy. Photon may interact through three main interactions discussed in this video lecture. The figure on the left shows the relative importance of the three interactions as the photon uh, as a function of photon energy and atomic number Z of the material. Example uh, is if we have let's say a 0.1 mega electron volt photon and it travels in a carbon, so the carbon is Z is equal to 6, the Compton effect is mainly predominant for, for this part. So this is the area for Compton, this is the area for photoelectric, and this is the area for pair production. If that same photon energy uh, travels, let's say for Z is equal to 53, which is, uh, that is iodine, used as a contrast in medical imaging, the photoelectric effect dominates as, as, as shown in this figure. If the photon energy, let's say, is 10, 10 mega electron volts, and uh, it travels in iodine, so still uh, we have Z is equal to 53, the dominant interaction is pair production. In tables and graphs, uh, this is commonly expressed in terms of the total mass attenuation coefficient with the units of uh, square meter per kilogram. Uh, this is because the density of the material is not needed to be specified. This figure on the left shows the mass attenuation coefficient for iron. It shows the attenuation as a function of energy per type of interaction with the black, uh, the black and the graph shows the total mass attenuation coefficient. So next, uh, we have this drawing uh, at the right. Let's start first at the top. And this shows uh, the expression for the intensity of the transmitted beam as it decreases uh, exponentially with the material thickness T. So we have this initial intensity of the beam, then we have this final intensity of the beam described by this equation. Last, we can define the average distance between two successive interactions. And this is called the mean free path lambda. So we have this formulation. So your lambda is, is equal to 1 over mu, uh, which is just the inverse of the total linear attenuation coefficient. Okay, uh, last, uh, let's talk about neutrons. Neutrons have no charge and can interact mainly with the nucleus. So meaning the Coulomb barrier is not a problem, unlike charged particles. The interaction can be classified mainly into two. So we have scattering and absorption. In scattering, shown in this uh, notes, we have the same product after the reaction as illustrated. It can be elastic or inelastic scattering. And for inelastic, the neutrons uh, kinetic energy is given to the nucleus as an excitation energy, and it may release gamma in the process. This is one responsible uh, in also this scattering is one responsible in moderating or meaning slowing down neutrons in nuclear fission reaction in a nuclear reactor. On the other hand, absorption is when neutron disappears and other particles may be a product of the reaction. It can be a neutron capture, charge particle emission, or fission. We can also define a cross-section here, which refers to the probability that an interaction will occur per target nucleus per neutron per square meters of heating the target. And it depends on the neutron energy and the mass number of the target nucleus. And that's it for this lecture. Hi! If you have learned something in this video and you like my content, please consider subscribing my YouTube channel, GP Academia. See you in the next video.